my YouTube family, welcome back to Melda242. I am Rimelda and today I will be preparing for you peas and grits, steamed fish, baked macaroni and cheese, coleslaw. If you want to see how this is prepared then continue watching. My fish has already been seasoned, the seasonings are on the left. Okay my pan is heated, it's on medium and I've added a cup and a half of oil. Okay, I went to the fish house and I was able to select the pieces that I wanted and these, these are what I chose. Each, each fish is going to be, I'm going to allow each piece to fry for about a minute or two on each side. Just to get a little bit of crust. Alright, they are frying. That pot is there for my macaroni and cheese, I'm adding a little bit of salt to the water. Baked macaroni and cheese. Okay. Just so that they can get a little crust on both sides. You don't have to fry them all the way. Well done now. Just a little bit. A little browning. And the tail is my favorite part. I don't have to worry about any bones. Especially when you have kids. So it's up to you. I was able to select this. This is hogfish. Better than grouper to me. There's no worm in this fish. Worms are in grouper. And of course the meat is extremely white. Thick and sweet. Try some. Hogfish. Alright. Two more pieces to go. That can turn over. About a minute or two on each side. Now I'm going to add the macaroni pasta into the boiling water, salted water. Now with this you're going to have to make sure that you stir it because you don't want it sticking to the bottom of the pot all together. Now the lid is not all the way on because I'm trying to avoid it from boiling over onto the stove. Okay, that's the first check. That's after about a minute or so. And you let it go again. Okay, this is the cheese. This is cheddar. This is about two pounds. So I'll be using that along with some Velveeta. Soft cheese in the packet just for the color. But if you, you don't have to use that if you don't want any of that in it. Just you can use more cheese if you wish. Now I'm preparing for the gravy. That's two spoons of the same fat that I've fried the fish in because that has the flavor Everything is in that. All right. Now I'm going to use these herbs that I had on the fish. Onion, bell pepper, celery, thyme, lime, garlic salt, and red pepper flakes. And of course some dash, Mrs. Dash. She's there too. All of that goodness. I'm just putting the herbs in for now and I'll add the, the liquid a little later. Keep watching now. Let that fry down for about 30 seconds or 30 seconds should do it. Just so they can get a little soft. This is steamed fish. So you can steam the, the whole fish just like this as well. The same recipe is for chicken, pork chops, whatever type of meat you want to steam, work the gravy the same way. Okay, I'm just adding a little bit more water to the pasta because they're not as soft as I want them. Oh, 
I like my pasta to be soft. Not smushy, but just, you know, white. This is how I do it. There are hundreds of Bahamian macaroni and cheese out there. This is just one way. Okay, it's time now for the tomato paste. Now, I don't have a lot of oil in this pan and I like it like that. Two heaping tablespoons of tomato paste. You don't need a lot of oil in the gravy because the fish has already been fried in fat, so, and fat is on it. Just a little goes a long way. It's up to you. A little bit of this browning. Okay, work that in. Okay, get those flavors going. Now that's the lime juice from the season, seasoning for the fish. Okay, a cup and a half of water. Give that a good mixing because all the flavor is at the bottom of the pot. So you're gonna have to try and get that up, wake it up. It's at the bottom. You don't need to add any more salt or whatever to this. If you wish, you can, but I'm not adding anything else. The fish has already been seasoned, so I think that's sufficient for us. That's great. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of thyme Take some more of that. The pasta is bubbling. Give that a check in a minute. Now this part, I'm starting this out on medium. But eventually I will turn it down. Before putting the fish inside, it's gonna be on low. Just gonna allow this to boil for about two minutes, two to three minutes before adding the fish. Okay. The macaroni and cheese. Turn this down on low. Okay, I'm just trying to get the ones that are stuck to the bottom of the pot up. Looks ready now. Wipe that up. Okay, I just like to keep it clean. In case anything falls, you can always put it back in. And also for presentation. Now I have some onion, bell pepper, and some garlic. I will list the recipe for this in the description box so you can always try it out Bahamian macaroni and cheese garlic salt now you don't want to go overboard with this because you're adding cheese and butter so you don't want to go overboard with the salt be mindful now Last is always best. Just mixing this up. That's the onion, the bell pepper, and the garlic. Okay, some butter. Now I'm not gonna use a half of this, just a quarter of this. Butter, caragold, this is salted, so you don't need that much salt. Just a quarter of that. That should do it. 
You don't want it too much oil because the cheese has oil as well. It's super greasy. You don't want that. Okay. Give this a good mixing. All right. That's just the butter, celery, onion, garlic. Okay, red pepper flakes. Now the stove is on low now, remember that. And it's just a little bit of liquid still in the pot. Now the evaporated milk. You can use fresh milk or evaporated milk. This is, this is about a half of a tin. Now I'm gonna pour almost all in and just leave a little bit to mix in with the eggs. This is how I do it. This is my recipe. It's still gonna be great. I'm, I'm going to add four large eggs. Number three. Number four, okay. The egg is gonna bring everything together. Give that a mixing and the rest of the evaporated milk or cream into the egg. Okay, this is gonna be so good. Now it's time for the egg. Eggs goes in, all right. That's four large eggs. You don't have to put as many eggs as that, but this is what I want in my macaroni and cheese today. I'm making this super rich, delicious. Four eggs, two pounds of cheese, cheddar cheese, and a packet of Velveeta soft cheese that's for the color now you don't have to add that if you don't want it just add more cheese okay add this in a bit at a time give it a mix 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 then add Oh my word, smells great already. This is how I make it. Get that piece inside. Okay. I'm gonna leave some for the top of the macaroni. Just leave some of the cheese for the top. This is going to be one rich macaroni and cheese. Oh my word. Delicious. When you're cooking, just keep everything nice and clean. I was taught 
Now my cream sauce. This is nice, gooey and thick and rich. This is for the color as well as the flavor. You don't have to use this if you don't wish to use it. You can add just add more cheddar, but this is what I want in my macaroni and cheese. And it is still behaving macaroni and cheese. Feel free to add whatever you want to add in your macaroni and cheese. It's still going to be good. It's yours. Work it. Give this a nice rich texture and the right color. It's thick. It's creamy. It's delicious. Work it. All right. Now the 242 macaroni and cheese, Bahamian macaroni and cheese. This is it. That's what I'm looking for. That's the color. Mm-hmm. All right. That's it. That's it. My pasta is cooked perfectly. Oh, see, that's a signal. Flavor. That's it. Turn that off. Now it's ready for the pan. Baking dish. Baking pan. Bahamian macaroni and cheese. All right. Put some Pam in the pan. This is it. I'm bringing it home. Now my way of doing this might not be your way. This is how I make my macaroni and cheese. So, just watch and learn something today. Something new. All of that goodness. Look at it. My, my, my. We should always learn from each other. This is it. Now I'll just add the rest of the cheese at the top. Then some paprika. Okay. This is what I am talking about. And of course today is also Mother's, this is also my Mother's Day meal, so we're just having the works today. My daughter and her family are here, so we will be having something wonderful. No peas and rice today, we're having peas and grits. Ooh. Stay tuned to see how it is made. This is a complete meal today, so stay tuned so you won't miss anything. You have the steamed fish, you have the macaroni and cheese, you have the peas and grits, you have the coleslaw, and of course, some brownies with walnuts come on now it's mother's day it's a mother's day meal okay let's put a little bit of this paprika on the top work this out then i would allow it to bake for about 20 to 30 minutes or until the sides are golden brown Once the sides are golden, you can take it out. 
and this would be on the top the top rack of the oven the oven is on 350 of course it's also preheated Twenty to thirty minutes. Now my gravy is ready. It has already boiled down some. It's thick, so I can add the fish in. And of course, it would be on low. So before adding it to the the heat, I'm just basing, basing them, just to make sure that all of them are coated with this goodness gonna be on low extremely low just to keep them soft and nice and warm that's it there you go now it's time for the peas and grits this time I'm adding three tablespoons of oil all of my ingredients herbs are already prepared onions bell pepper celery and garlic so I'm going to be adding two cloves of garlic to this. So that's going to set it off. That's the onion, the bell pepper and the celery. Two cloves of garlic. Just going to wake them. I would like to take this opportunity to wish all of my subscribers, those of you who are mothers and those of you who will become mothers in the future, a happy Mother's Day. God bless you and love yourself today. Okay. Give this a good mixing. Oh boy. We're still in quarantine so we can't get out. So I'm still bringing the restaurant home. Even though it's Mother's Day. Okay, adding some more thyme. This is peas and grits. This is prepared just, just how I did the peas and rice. This has this is the same way. The only difference is grits instead of rice. Tomato paste. Okay. Started to get some browning at the bottom. Caught it right in time. Get everything coated with the tomato paste. Okay. I'm making peas and grits. Pigeon peas and grits. Okay, now the brownie. Okay. That should do it. Give this a good mixing. Oh yes. Smells great already. Peas, these were peas, I had them in the freezer. Now, they're not fully thawed, but they will be in a moment. The heat would soon get them together. This is about a cup, one cup, full cup. Red pepper flakes. Garlic salt. Don't go over the board, overboard with the salt now. I would suggest that you season as you go. Don't put in all one time. As you add, 
you can adjust it from there okay getting all of that goodness from the bottom pigeon peas like I said it was in the freezer I had a bag of dried peas and I boiled them this is the last pack now I'm rinsing the grits yellow grits now you if you don't have yellow grits you can use white grits yellow grits is all I have so I'm going to work that today now it's time to add this to the pot okay my grits has already been rinsed that's four cups of grits yellow grits this is how I cook my peas and grits some some people would allow the water to boil first but I don't do my own like that I do it the same way I cook the peas and rice stay tuned you'll see how it's gonna come out I know what I'm doing all right just look at it don't move this is Bahamian peas and grits watch it out watch it it's coming I'm bringing it home In about 10 minutes or so you'll have it just making sure that everything is coated before adding the water this is how I cook my peas and grits Oh my word, look at it. Now it's time for the water. That was four cups of grits. Now I'm going to add, this container holds four cups. So I'm going to add about six or seven cups of water to this pot. This is a, a huge pot. This is my soup pot. And you know grits swell, so need a lot of water. Water, water, water. This is for my subscribers today, peas and grits, as well as my followers. Those of you who don't want to subscribe, you're just watching. I still appreciate you. Stay tuned. I've already added four cups. Okay, and I've added four cups of water. I need to add some more flavor. This time I'm bringing out the salt. You season the flavor. I can't tell you to use two tablespoons or one. No, you know how you like it, so work it. Remember, less is best. Four cups and I just poured in about another two cups there's still more water in this container so so that's about six cups of water in already little bit more Okay, I'll let that go for about 10-15 minutes before I check it. Now it's time to take the macaroni and cheese, oh my word, out of the oven and that looks heavenly. This is Bahamian macaroni and cheese. While that is cooling and the grits is working out, 
I will start the brownies. This is a box of Duncan Hines. And I'll be adding some walnuts to this. This box calls for two eggs. I'm adding three. Everything is, being, is going to be rich today. Three large eggs. Okay. This was requested, requested by my 12 year old daughter. Mommy makes some brownies today. I said, okay. And now my eldest daughter is here with her kids and she said she's gonna make a pound cake. So we are having the works. Then we'll have some ice cream. I'm adding about a third cup of oil to this. Give this a good mixing. All right. Get some milk, okay. As a quarter cup of milk. I don't think I'm going to need any water, just in case. That should do it. A little bit of vanilla and some brandy. Oh, I have a story on this brandy. I sent my husband to get a little one. You know the little small one that they use on the plane? He bought this big thing. Oh, for heaven's sake, I have enough brandy to bake for another three years. So that's for my guava duff. I'm making another guava duff with a brandy sauce. So stay tuned for that. Give this a good mixing. Okay, that's what I want to see. Yes. These are gonna be nice and moist. Now it's time for the walnuts. I'm just gonna use about a cup of this. Trying to crush them, pinch them up, break them up. Okay. You can use as much of this as you want. No, this would be about a half a cup. A half a cup of walnuts. Into it, and then I'll put another, another bit of walnuts at the top. Some more at the top. Checking the grits. The grit is sleeping at the bottom, so I have to wake it up. Rice and shine grits. Peas and grits, see it's at the bottom. See this is the difference between cooking grits and rice. You have to stir it. Oh boy. I am going to get this together. I am bringing it home. Just stay tuned please. This is peas and grits. I am doing it very slowly because I do not want an accident. Don't want an accident. We are, we're still on lockdown, so this is no time to go to the hospital. The big C is out there. Let's give it a good mixing. It is waking up now, it's stretching. All right. This is what you want to see. Have to stir it. Mix it up. That's what you want. Bahamian peas and grits. This is my recipe.
this is how I saw my mommy did it so just passing it on to you just like this oh my word you can also use this recipe for crab and grits okay or corn beef and grits whatever you want to add in the grits same recipe this is it oh boy it smells delicious beautiful now it's not finished yet it's gonna have to go for another five to eight minutes ten minutes max on low heat Now I'm not cooking br breakfast grits, so this has to be a little firmer than the breakfast grits. Now I'm going to add the brownie to this dish. It's ready for the dish. Okay, just like that. Take that away, add some more nuts. Time for the oven. Preheat it. 350 degrees and that's gonna go for about 15 minutes after 10 minutes let's take it and give it a little whack then I'm gonna put it back in while that is cooling down a bit I'm just adding um, working on my slaw I'm just cutting up about a tablespoon or so of these dried cran raisins to put in my slaw. I have the cabbage, the carrots, celery, and the lime. That's all I'm adding today. No bell pepper, no onions. A dash of sugar and some mayo. Oh, that's not gonna do it let me get a spoon okay two heaping tablespoons of mayo that should do the trick and that was a quarter head of a cabbage I will put the ingredients in the description box for you below stay tuned almost done Just turn the stove off under the fish. That's my grits. That's it. So I'm just going to wake it up one more time. This is the last rest for you. All right. This is going to be extra better tomorrow when I warm it up. I will be able to tell you about it. That's when you're going to really taste the flavors. It's peas and grits. That's everything right there. Salad, the fish, the macaroni and cheese, the cakes. If you have watched this video all the way to the end and you have enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. And I will see you in the next one.